Hello everyone, it's Finch here, and we're back with some more um, black and white overuse. This time around it's for a very special tournament to me. It's the finals of the black and white seasonal. Um, so what happened was, I made it all the way through the winner's bracket, defeating really strong players like Ryza and Trickstreet in past rounds. Um, I also defeated this guy, um, who was by form named 850, is a respectable player as well. Um, but in my run, I um, pretty much won in straight sets, except one time I lost to Twixtree, so the round robin reset. It was me, Ryzen, and Twixtree in the winner's finals, and then ultimately I beat both of them in the next time around. So that got me to the grand finals, and then both Ryzen and Twixtree fell um, to 850 in the loser's finals. Um, I believe actually Twixtree lost to activity after the round robin reset once or twice, but here we are. Um, so what happens is, since I won the winner's bracket, I don't only have to. I, I only have to win one best of three. He has to beat me in two best of threes, which basically means that if I lose the first best of three, which is this game, it starts with this game, then I will emerge victorious and be the grand champion. However, if I lose this one, then he'd have to beat me in another to be the grand champion. Whereas if I were to win that one, then I would still win the tournament, basically. So yeah, without further ado, I'm gonna pause for one second, and we're gonna get into those games. All right, so in game one, I'm using a team that you might have recognized. Use it in black and white cup semifinals against Dan Mana in a pretty unfortunate game. However, I'm bringing it out again here. It consists of special defensive glue score with Swords Dance Facade, Signal Beam Alakazam, um, just a special defensive Rotom Wash with actually a bit of physical defense in this team, but still EVs always love Eladios, Draco Meteor, um, two Alakazam, Psychic, etc. Whole slew of things there. I think I actually the Psychic for Stealth Rocket Sam, but yeah. Um, on top of that, I have special defensive Ferrothorn, uh, Specs. Latios and a Chopple Dram type, but it's actually Ice Beam plus Fire Blast. It's walled by Heatran because I feel okay doing that with Special Defensive Glyph Score, Alakazam, Rotomash, and Surf Latios. So, yeah, looking at his team, um, it doesn't really um, strike me as a well built team, in all honesty. Um, his only water resist is a Latios. Unfortunately, I'm not bringing a Rain team or really anything to abuse that. Um, however, my Rotomash looks really good here when paired with Pursuit, assuming he's a Mold Breaker. Not a mold breaker Rhino Exeter, which Sand Force is more likely than not on this team. Um, running into Tyranitar plus Weavile with two Steel types with Alakazam is a really hard matchup for me. So right at the bat, I'm pretty much playing 5v6. If I hit multiple Focus Blasts, maybe I'll be able to get some ground out of it. But even then, it doesn't look too great. So that's fine. And unfortunately, also, the Weavile is just really hard to switch into assuming it's low kick. Um, I don't really have much against much for it, and I have nothing that outruns it. So... I gotta be really careful of that right off the bat. Um, honestly, Weavile teams in black white are few and far in between, mainly because Tyranitar does a better job at pursuiting than it, and it doesn't switch in anything, so it doesn't even beat things you need to pursue. You need to fire something first. Um, unfortunately, though, he's running two pursuiters, which is basically unprecedented, and that's because team building with both Weavile and, and, and Tyranitar is impossible. You're super, um, super limited with those, but he managed to fit both of those plus Magnezone and a Dragon type on his team, so this matchup is just. Complete doomsday for me, unfortunately. Um, Rotom Wash is going to put in OT. I really wish I brought a rain team here just because he would have had no chance. He would have just lost six on the spot. Um, honestly, I don't really understand his team, but I know that he brought it, and I know that I'm going to have to play from this position. So let's get on into the game before this video turns into Finch complains about teams in black-white compilation 2.0. No, no, no. This is um, this is Finch narrates his game, so... Yeah, I'm a, little, I'm a little turned off by this team preview, but I leave Rotom Wash just knowing, okay, it does pretty well against everything. So right off the bat, I'm like, okay, I'm going to have to Wisp here. Hopefully I can burn something, and I catch the um, Latios with the Wisp, which is really good. And um, he's going to go ahead and double switch to Tyranitar, which is interesting, as I go Tyranitar of my own. Um, right here, I um, I feel like my Tyranitar is actually more valuable than his. Um, and here's the reason. Tyranitar in a dual psychic so matchup is really good because it's able to, you know, potentially even do something against both, not trap both. But his is paired with Weavile. So all of a sudden, like, you know, maybe he's, um, maybe he's going to set up rocks and I can set mine up, but I still don't want to risk it. Um, I want to get something I can do, make progress right off the bat, and I also want to figure out what the, um, the lander is here. If it's, like, um, a couple things. Maybe if it's Scarf, then I could potentially chip it down and then slack and then roost off whatever he does to me, like in Bar Ice. Also, if I force an Latios stake to chip damage, it's great. It's a 2 range of facade if they're burned. So, overall, I think I can do a progress range position with this good score. And on top of that, I don't die to Ice Beam from Fall Hall. So, I'd rather get in before South Rock chip. So, I do that. That's great. And then he goes Latios here on the facade. So, I'm like, okay, this is actually a pretty good start despite the um, the rough thing surrounding. He's already done the 29%. He double switches to Extra Drill, which is kind of weird. And I roost because I live even a Spec Surfer Draco Meteor. Draco Max is at like 98% damage against me. I'm literally max special defense plus on this. I have no speed. No attack, no defense. So yeah, um, 
that actually went really well. I kind of figured he'd predict the um, the Barathorn or the Time Pattern Double Wind, so I figured he'd go either Magnezone, Fall On Predicting Barathorn, or Axe as a mid-round. But um, that, and also the fact that I lived in a hit, it just felt safe for me. So I get this in, and it's great. He goes Landorus here. As I think I just go for a Surge Dance. Yeah. So we're in a great spot here. He U-turns. He didn't hit Power Eyes, which is interesting. He goes right back to Exodrill. And now I'm super confused because why does he keep going Exodrill? I just don't understand it all, honestly. Um, why not, like, why not Hidden Power Ice there? Or why not go Latios? Because if I'm going to attack, it's going to be Facade. So you let that go, and then you get Weevil and the Force Me Out. And Latios obviously isn't too useful, besides just dying and then letting Magnezone come in. And you could just switch Magnezone into Farathon anyway. I'm not worried he's in this team. And actually, I am worried he's in this team, but still, even if I'm worried he's, he's still going to get a ton of damage off before I can get the worried he's off. So it's not a big deal for him. Um, my Farathon's ridiculously pressed right now. Just because of the Magnezone being there. Um, so all in all, that U-turn didn't make much sense to me. But I'm like, okay, this is a great spot. So I could just Earthquake here, and I kill it. Worst case scenario, he goes to his own Landorus, and that's fine. I just roost again. He goes for Iron Head, it gets 43. That reveals that he's probably Jolly or got him in damage roll there. But he flinches, which sucks, I would have died. And now he gets crit here. Um, and boy, I mean, I roosted there, for the record. Um, but now I'm like, wow, okay, I really just can't win this game. I mean... He gave up on momentum right in the spot pretty much early and just played in the defensive, but he got everything, so I fell really well behind. Um, so now I just I don't think I can win the game, but I do know Rotom Watch should at least try. Um, so he goes Protect there, and I think I just go Hydro, but it can stay in and go, get um, Greedy. But now um, now he goes to Magnezone on that second Hydro Pump. I'm like, okay, wait, I weakened this, but he's um, Leftovers, which... I mean, he's really weak to opposing extra drill with Scarf Landers is only check, so I don't know why he's not Balloon, but whatever. I'm going to stop trying to make sense of the team building here. It's obvious this guy used a tier and plays a tier very differently than most players, so this is fine. Now I go try and try predicting the Latios, but he stays in, and this is an even worse play. I'm sorry, like, I just don't really understand. I mean, if I Hydro Pump to kill you, and I, he, he might be faster, but still, if I get that damage off, then all of a sudden Farathorn actually does really well against this entire team. So I don't get that, but... Whatever, his Latios is low enough where I could just kind of say, okay, screw it. Um, he, uh, I Fire Blast, you know, and I could kill it, but actually kills the Latios instead, so he switches out. And so, yeah, it does the Tyranitar's job for it, basically. Now he goes Landorus here. And the thing is that with how Glyph scored, it just come in on U-turn, soak it up, and put his nail health up. I've screwed here, because I can't go Rotom Wash and let it get in the Pursuit range for either of these, specifically Weavile. I can't lose my Sash here for nothing. I can't go Latios for nothing. I can't go Fire Thunder, just... He decided to fire off the Magnus zone, but I, I thought he'd be better than that. So I'm basically like, oh, fuck, I can't do shit. So I stand with Tyranitar, hoping that um, I can at least catch favorable switch. I go for um, a Fire Blast, I hit the drill, and I do a nice 70% there, which is cool. Um, okay, so now he goes back to Landorus T, which honestly I don't really make sense of. Like, why not just go for the kill? But I went for Falathorn, thinking, okay, he's not going to go over it. He's going to go Iron Head, and then he'll double to this on it. But yeah, now I go Tar here just to fire it off to the new turn, because it's basically dead to, anyway. It would die to two turns of Rock, so yeah. That's fine. He gets extra back in. And that's chill with me. Because now I can bring my run wash in. He's going to protect, which is a smart play. As I hydro pump into that protect here. And now I'm like, wow, nothing really switches into hydro pump here. So I'm actually kind of feeling okay about this. He goes for Iron Head. Okay, that sucks. So I'm like, okay, if he's going to really pursue this, then fine. I'll pain split and I'll get out of here to some of my health before. As when he flinched me. But he flinches again. And now I'm like, okay, I really need to get this pain split up. Because extra is way more base HP than me. And it's much higher now. But he goes to Magnezone, which... Honestly, of all the things to switch to, this wasn't it. Going to Tranchar was. Um, you've got Weavile still, and you're going to be healthy enough to live a, a Hydra anyway. But like this, I guess whatever is the second best thing to switch to, but like, wow. The fact they got both flinches and then decided, okay, I'm going to bail now. That's just so infuriating. So at this point, I'm like, okay, this is low, and he's not going to let it get higher. He's got Weavile, which basically fucks the rest of my team, and Magnuson's going to stay alive to trap me. So I'm just like, okay, fuck this game. Um, and I just forfeit. Um it's pretty obvious that I would have won this game if I preserved the Gliss score, but that's okay. Um, we clearly see the game in a very different fashion, so I'm going to try and make a bit less assumptions in the future games. The really key of um, being a consistent game player is being able to adapt your game plan and your strategy to whatever situation might surround you. So I knew right off the bat, those going to have to play with a few less assumptions and just make a lot of solid plays and get a better read in the situation before I proceed. Why is this taking forever to load the second game? Hello? Did the third game I load? No, oh crap, um, what is going on here? I don't know what's going on here. Is my internet like shitting out now? Um, all right, give me a, I, I can't switch internets. 
Crap. Um, I gotta pause. One sec. Okay, well, whatever happened, game two is now loaded. I don't think game three is going to load. Um, well, okay, the replay thing is doing something really weird in the side right now. Like, just glitched out. But I don't think this part of the green is impacted. At least it's not in my display. So hopefully get into it. But yeah, game two, um, as I said, I just really couldn't come in with any assumptions. And he loaded up a team with Flygon, Zapdos on Weatherless, Slowbro, which is kind of fringe viable, Tentacruel, and Sizz I. At this point, I just have no clue what to expect anymore. But this is a team I used in um, SPL semifinals against Ryza. It's gained a lot of popularity since then, so I stopped using it. But um, I knew that it now was a good time to bring it out because this guy kind of was um, a bit of um, away from the convention. He's just using anti-standard stuff. This is kind of my like change-up team, if you will. So right off the bat, I'm like, okay, Zapdos is kind of annoying, but I could get a Taco Gun with Drill for some sub, and that's okay. And um, Flygon actually locate is a threat if it's like a mixed variant, but I don't think he's mixed. It's probably like Bandit or Scarf. Otherwise, why use it over Chomp? Because you're not using U-turn. So yeah, I'm like, okay, I can deal with this. So I leave Balloon, just try to get a Protect off, um, and he U-turns. I'm like, okay, if this is mixed with U-turn, then I just give up on life. And he reels he's banded, which honestly isn't much better. Um, but anyway, I go sub here, um, and he gets Scizor in. Now I can just heal up from that U-turn into sub myself, and I can just go for a nice um, Focus Punch slash Seed Bomb here. Or sub again. I, I, I think I just Focus Punch in case he's quicker. Yeah, um, so I focus punch, and Slowbro comes in here, and I could do a nice 24%. That reveals he's really physically defensive. Okay, that's kind of expected from Slowbro. Um, I protect here. Um, now I'm all the way up almost to fall here. I protect again. I'm like, okay, I could deal with that for sure. Um, I think I just got to Landers here knowing that um, I can remain really healthy after the U-turn. That reveals it's banded, so it's fine. I'm at 85 before leftovers. I'm like, okay, though, I don't want to take it by ice. It should be able to kill me. Uh, might be a roll if he's no special attack. But yeah, I go drill here on that. And he reveals hidden power ice. And I'm like, okay, that's fine with me. I could potentially toxic this. Or I could earthquake break my switch. I'm going to go for the toxic, though. I'm just knowing, okay, I don't want to take a heat wave to the face. And if he subs, then i got to figure it out quicker, quicker than has it. No, I protect here. Um, he went flag on the toxic, which is fine with me. He goes slow bro now. I get toxic off on that. I'm like, okay, if he's called burn to me, it's okay, honestly. But he doesn't, thankfully. So it's the one thing that actually did go in my favor. And now I can protect to get a little bit healthier. And yeah, honestly, I'm fine taking a burn on one of my two steals because I don't need both of them. But if I take a burn on both, and it kind of gets annoying longevity-wise. So I go Rotom Wash here, not trying to break his burn on either of them. I see goes Flygon, and now I can just go for Hit Fire Ice and take it out. He didn't think I was Scarp, so yeah, that worked out really well for me. Um, he goes Heatran here, um, and I go Landris T here. And speaking of the devil, um, he gets Rocks up, and then he stays in and goes for the burn. And as I get Rocks up, which is really unfortunate for me, as he gets it. So now my switching to Scizor is really limited. Um, at this point, I'm going to just um, predict him to switch, and I go U-turn, but he protects. All right, that's fine with me. Um, he goes Zapdos here, and now do I go for an Earthquake here? Yeah, I go for an Earthquake, hoping he gets greedy and stays in. I mean, he tried that. 100% might have had a chance to live that, so yeah. And now he goes Heat Wave and reveals these, like, Specs or Scarf. I don't know. It did kill, though, and it's really offensive. So that plus not taking leftovers. I'm like, okay, it's choice. I go Surf here, predicting the Scizor or Heatran. He goes Tentacle, which is a really good play by him. I go Bloom here. I'm like, okay. Looking at his team, he has a Flygon with Choice Band to just U-turn to break subs constantly, and a Zapdos. There's no way in hell that this team has Sludge Bomb, Ice Beam, or Venishock on the Tentacle. For a Weatherless team, this is literally as well prepared for the um, opposing Bloom as possible. Him having one of these moves would just be like really annoying. So he spins here. And I'm like, okay, I can sub for sure. I eat the Scald, and he reveals Ice Beam. And I'm just like, you know, why? You've got a slow bro that probably has Ice Beam of its own. It's a bulky water, too. You're clearly good against Loom. Like, why? And to make matters worse, he's also fully physically defensive, which makes even less sense with slow bro. You'd really want to be fast here for drill. But whatever. I um, protect again, and I'm able to get out of Ice Beam range, but he switched to Scizor, so I'm like, okay, great. Now, with my freaking Landers T-Dead, I don't have much to switch into this. So I'm going to go extra and take 30% from this U-turn, which now means that my ability to check things is completely diminished. I can't even live another U-turn after rocks at this point. But he goes Tentacruel, which is an awful play, because I live Scald with ease, and he had Scizor at full health. And he could have honestly um, went Zapdos and then, like, doubled back. But he goes Scald here, and thank God he doesn't get the burn this time. So it makes up for him getting the burn before with the level plume and the fish turn. And I get to pick it out, so I, I really don't think he played that well. 
And now he goes slow, bro. And I think at this point, I'm just like, okay, I'll cut my losses. I've stalled enough Toxic. I could just spin here. And I do that indeed, which is going to be great. And now it actually looks pretty good for me. I can't believe he threw away the Tentacruel. It would have been so nice for him in this match, seeing as a Ice Beam. Now Balloon is able to walk all over him. And on top of that, he has one less thing to tank a Rotom Watch Volt, which is still doesn't do a kill, even physically defensive. I go Volt, it does 71. And then he's Psychic, expecting the Balloon or me to stay in, perhaps. And it only does 5% to Jirachi, which is a 2%. So now I can go in and U turn to kill. But he goes Heatran to preserve that and get Regenerator. And I go Latios. And now I can effectively Scald. It should be able to 2 kill to Scizor. And of course, 2 kills to very weakened in Poison. Slow bro. That's 23. He's brought down to 12. And then I'm able to 2 kill it there. So it's great. So, barring hacks, we should be able to win this game. I surf here. It does 67 to Scizor. And to make matters even better, he pursues. And he doesn't get absolute max damage, which he might have needed to kill. And now he goes Latios as I live with that. Surf this 59 to him, leaving him really weak. So he's in Berlin range. I go Drachi here. No, okay, might as well preserve that for Heatran. He gets Heatran in here. I'm like, okay. Um, I just need to use in here. And if he goes for um, Lava Plume and Latios, I could get the Rotom Wash in. Yeah, that's fine. I just figured if he goes Rocks, I might as well just cut him off ASAP. And yeah, now I get the Rotom Wash in. I can just Hydro into this. And it doesn't look like he has anything to do damage me besides Lava Plume, potentially Toxic Loss. I um, Hydro here. And he's going to Lava Plume. And he does 22. And of course he burns. So I'm like, oh, great. But at least I connected, so I'm focusing on my part here. He protects again, leaves me pretty low. And now I think he's got a fodder or something, because both Scizor, Zapdos, and Heatran, all three are in the range. So he's got a fodder Scizor to get to Zapdos to revenge kill me, which is chill with me. And like, okay, now at this point in the game, I'm like, damn, um, if I get unlucky enough, I can lose. But I know Drachi's quicker than Heatran, and there's no way to sub with Stealth Rock. So long as I get a Body Slam power on it, I win the game for sure with um, the Bloom. I'm thinking, okay, how does he potentially beat that? He can't because no weather set, so sub plus protect and outstall it. Only way out is if he has, um, if he never ever, if I never fully power with the um, Jirachi, and he's able to either dodge a Hydro Pump or like protect spam so I him back with um, Heatran versus Rotom, or, 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 or he has Roar and he could Roar in the sub. If that is indeed the case, then um, that'd be really bad. But I'm like looking at his team like, okay. So first off, his speed control is the Scarf Zapdos. So therefore, Hidden Power Ground, Volcarona. Oh, not, not Hidden Power Ground, Volcarona is actually really threatening. He doesn't have recovery and tentacle. So it takes like any chip damage and all of a sudden Volcarona 1v1s it. So he has to have Toxic or like something like Roar last. But I'm thinking more and more and more. And Roar is actually a good solution because he turns also his Rocker. And Stami, Extra, and Tentacle all beat it. So he's not going to be able to keep Brock's in the long term. So in a way, that isn't even like a great answer in, in the long term to Volcarona. But also I'm thinking more and more, what could that last move be? He doesn't have any spikes in his team. And the only time you'll ever see Roar Heatran uses either one, it drops Stealth Rock as a bit of a luxury safety net against things like Volcarona and Rio Nicholas that lack focus blast, or one paired with spikes to spread that passive damage. And he doesn't have that. And there's no way, he doesn't even have sand to like spread any damage. It's just, I'm like thinking more and more. At this point, I literally took a minute of my time. I'm like, okay, it has to be Toxic last. There's no way any other move makes any sense. So seeing as Roar is like, Practically unused on it, and the fact that I just really, really feel like I can just go be confident here. He vaults. It doesn't even leave me in, in um, lava plume range, so I know at this point body slam is 100% to play. I go for it, and thankfully I get the 60% power. I would have had another chance though. I eat the full power is irrelevant. Um, I wish here um, he gets the 43% lava plume. Like okay, no big deal. At this point, I could actually just um, you turn into a mosh if I really want to, but again. I'm winning the game either way at this point. He fled powers again, but yeah, I was obviously not dying. If he um, crit, he, I would have died, but it would have really sucked. He protects here. I I volt switch here, just knowing I don't want to waste all my hydro PP. I only have four left. If he goes Zapdos and I do, he dodges one, then I'm fucked. So I volt switch. I crit, but again, it doesn't matter because it's already in hydro or focus punch range as is. I go Jirachi. I like that. Go to the Jirachi. I'm like, okay, great. Now I can go to Balloon here and I can just click substitute and I win the game. Eventually I get power, but he roars. And I'm like, at this point, so fed up because like Ice Beam on the Tent Tent Roar and this, it just, why? I, I'm not sure I understand in all honesty. And anyway, thankfully, no hacks here. Even if you protected there, it was well in a Hydro Pump range, like 70% he would have been in, 65%. Go Zapdos, I'm like, okay, just don't crit the goddamn, um, don't crit the goddamn Balloon because he has to lock into Thunderbolt to kill the Rotom. Or he would have had to die to Hydro Pump, so... Actually, you know what? Him clicking Heat Wave was a better play. Heat Wave Hidden Bar Eyes is a better play. Because I would have had to double protect with Hidden Bar Eyes and double protect with Heat Wave. But the odds of Hydro Pump missing are like 
Yeah, 8020. So it was a choke by him. But yeah, at this point, just don't freaking crit me. I protect here just to make sure I'm like out of range and maybe a chance to crit. He's max like special attacks. He crit obviously kills you. And thankfully, he doesn't crit, and I'm able to take it out with Seed Bomb, and I'm very victorious in this battle. So I win in a game that felt like every little last detail was going against me. But now we got to get to game three, and game three is only loading weirdly. Um, give me a second here. No, okay, yeah. Um, let me research my name on replays real quick. Go to private. Why is it not? Oh, come on. One second, guys. I got to pause. All right, we're back for game three. I'm bringing Old Reliable. It's the Mixed Guard Chomp team you've seen quite a few times in this channel, but if not, it's Mixed Guard Chomp with Stealth Rock. I tend to lead with it or Rotom Wash, which is especially defensive. Standard um, Sand Force Extra Drill. Physically defensive Amoongus, which actually sucks this match because he's got Keldeo, which could be Specs. Landorus T, and just a four attacks variant of special defense with Joppel Tranitar. So, yeah, this match looks really um, interesting. Um, he's got Dragonite plus Guard Chomp in the rain. You only tend to see one Dragon that's not Latios on the rain teams. So, if even. So, it's an interesting trade off, and honestly, it does nicely for him in this matchup, but it does make Rotom Wash a bit more annoying because the only thing you can do is go Pharaoh, which is going to get Wisp. So, I know that Rotom Wash into Garchomp slash Landers T can do well, but I know that I'm going to have to get a lot of chip on him and play aggressively enough to where I beat him before he beats me with Keldeo plus the Dragon types. So, I lead Rotom Wash again, just normal lead, and I'm going to Volt Switch here. Predicting him to just stay in and go for a spec sacred sword, and he does that. And that chip is huge for me. And it, honestly, me getting chipped isn't a big deal because I can paint split anyway. So I go Landorus here, and now I predict him to switch. And I go for U-turn knowing that okay, he specs anyway, so I can get Amoongus in if I need to. And now I go Guard Chomp here. It's a mixed variant of Guard Chomp. So I predict him to switch, and I think I just go Rocks here. Yeah, I go Rocks here. Um he goes Polytoad. I'm like, okay, that's fine. I can go Rotom. He scalds, and it's offensive. And it burns and kills me, so I can't paint split on. After that damage, I would just switch right out, but of course he gets to burn at the perfect time, so I'm like weakened and low and shit, and I go Tar here, because I'm like, okay, offensive Scald still only like, not even always a 3 KO, as you see from this damage, it does 26, so it's not, it's, oh, not, it's barely a 4 KO, and of course he burns this one after I like Pursuit here, yeah, Pursuit was a bit um, on the risky side, but I knew chipping it and just scouting it out to see what it was, we just would have revealed it was Scarf damage, for example, because um, he has no HP, but I'm like, okay, maybe he can still be offensive, so, but the second Scald confirmed it, but yeah, that Pursuit only does 11% after the burn, so that's really sucky. Um, and also Tranitar's weakened, so I'm like, now I'm in a huge hole, because he got both burns. If he got neither or just one, it was fine, but he got both, so it's like, really sucks. Um, now he goes Tentacle here, as I go to Amoongus, and that just makes that his worst, so he can spin here. Um, thankfully for me, I could go Guard Chomp on that spin, I believe. Um... Yeah, so he's going to chip him a bit, which is good for me. But, yeah, I feel like I've got a huge hole here because he got those burns. I really just need him to not burn both, but of course he did. And now he goes Polytoad, which dies to Earthquake because it's Scarf. And that's kind of funny, but at least I do win the Weather War. But now he makes a really stupid play. He has a Spex Keldeo against a team with physically defensive Amoongus, relatively dead Rotom Wash, uh, Garchomp out, Rain up, Tarantar weakened. And instead of going that, he goes to the Garchomp, risking a speed tie. Yeah, he, that's right. He's not Scarf. I was like, okay, maybe he's dual Scarf. I don't know. I'll just go Tar and Fodder it. But no, he goes to the Guard Chomp and risks his speed attack for no reason. So taking his free fucking kill. And he just doubles to Pharaoh for some unknown reason. So he had a kill out in front of him, and he just didn't take it. So, and now, um, to make matters worse, I can double the Guard Chomp here, but he goes to his own Chomp again. So I'm like, okay, here we are. Um, and now I go to Amoongus. He Earthquakes. It only does 29. So I'm like, okay, this isn't actually even an offensive Guard Chomp. Like, what the hell is he doing? He dies to Draco. So he goes Dragonite here, and I hit in Power Ice. I'm like, oh, damn, only 25? That's like a very HP-invested guard Dragonite there. So I'm like, okay, but he's not leftover, so maybe he's like a bulky Dragon Dance set. So I um, fire off my Tar here to Dragon Claw. I'm like, okay, he um, might be banded, given that. Um, so it's not like sub or anything, so he might just be banded with a lot of HP. So I'm thinking like, okay, Extreme Speed here is super important for him because it's going to take out a Chip Guard Chomp. It can take out a Chip Landorus T. And, um, in general, it's just really good against the late game, in late games. So, yeah, I figured he'd have to save this, especially because it's the only thing he has to take advantage of when Moongus left, seeing as it's not really an offensive guard shot. And the, um, Ferrothorn is constantly worried about Roden Rush, like, getting into the double down and pain splitting, or more likely, either guard shot or actually just breaking through it. It's both ability to a killer. So, I go drill here. I'm like, okay, there's no way he's going to predict the, he's going to stay in. 
But of course he does, and it would have died. But he just clicks the Band of Dragon Claws like Earthquake, predicting the um, any of these three to come in. And now he goes Tentacruel on the Iron Head. I'm just like furious at this point. Like, why would you do that? I, the risk reward was just horrible. Because like, even if he loses Tentacruel for nothing, he's still way out ahead of this game. But he made that up play. So I'm like, okay, I've got to make a lot of plays to come back in this game now, just because of those burns and that play. So I'm behind by a lot now. So I can vote for Protect here. And now, here we go. Another Tentacruel on x -Drill sequence. And for what it's worth, the max damage there is literally 65. I have HP invested. But even without it, it was max like 67. So there's no way I was dying. And in Sand, I kill with Earthquake anyway. So yeah, um, I'm already in E-Speed range and any other faster attack range. So this plan is to go run and watch this fire because I figure it's slower. I'm not going to get a chance to paint it up. But I'm able to take out Tentacruel. And thankfully, since I didn't get burned for once in a lifetime, um, take it out. Now I Earthquake here. And he reveals himself to be max HP. And, yeah, it lives too. Like, it had to be, like, more than, like, the HP I figured it would be. But thankfully, because he's that HP, I always love Aqua Tail. In fact, he got a high roll here, even to cap on that. So I doubled the extra roll, predicting the guard jump. And I'm like, okay, I could at least protect here and scout at E-Speed, maybe. I do that. I go to Amoongus. But now the thing is that without Rotom Wash, the Ferrothorn's really annoying to me. So i got to be mad careful here. Um, and he goes Keldew here as I, um, I go guard jump. And, um, yeah, I go right back to Amoongus, and he hidden power ices, and that's pretty much the game. Um, honestly, I don't mind the fact that his stats were kind of weird. For example, Scarf Polytoad is really bad with the post-sleep ban, just in general keeping rain up, as you see, took 77 from that earthquake. Probably taking more, honestly. But what really annoyed me was the fact that he had the free kill taken, and he actually just went to guard champ, which wouldn't even kill my guard champ, given that it's bulky as it is. And... Just like didn't take the free kill and basically said, okay, I'm gonna go for the speed touch right, give myself an extra leg up when I'm already winning the game. And it wasn't even like a bluff. Like he already revealed his scarfer. So yeah, but he's able to win this end game. So I know I gotta do better next set. Um fire this off. Um Yeah, um Honestly, this really ticked me off because I had game one one without the luck. And I had game 3-1 without the luck. And on top of that, it's like he had all this specific stuff. And it's just like black, white, couple all over again. I felt really tilted. So I told him, hey, I'm not going to play the next set this day. I clearly am not in the best state of mind after this. Um, nothing against you. I mean, obviously, I wasn't going to tell him he's bad to his face because, like, he's not a bad player. He's a good player, but really uncharacteristic. I almost feel like this guy's a lot of a better player in another tier, for example. But he didn't know what he's doing to Black White. He just came up with this like random crafty bullshit. And it just kind of happened to work. I'm really not trying to discredit his win so much. I'm just saying, like, you know, I felt like for him to win that series, given how they were played, a lot of things had to go for him. And they pretty much all fell. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to reset for a couple days. And he said Wednesday works for him. So now we get the second set today, the grand final. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to bring, oh my God, is it really not loading again? Really? Are you serious? Load. Come on. Jesus. All right, I got to pause for a second, I guess. Kidding me? One sec, guys. All right, here we go. So these are today's games. Right off the bat, um, using a drag mag is actually a six that I've built before and using a couple times before, so I'm wondering right off the bat if it's the same team. My variant of it was the sub Dragonite set with um, a Nevermelt Ice Mammoth Swine, a Balloon Magnezone, a Leftovers Starmie, Scarf Garchomp, and a Shukaberry. Drachi, but I know there's a lot of potential for versatility. For example, it could be Rocks Chomp and Scarf Drachi. It could be a Dragon Dance offensive Dragon or a Choice Band Dragon It could be Choice Band and Mammoth Line, Life Orb, Mammoth Line. I think it has to be Magnet Rise, Mag Zone in this deck because it's, otherwise it's just decimated by Axe Drill. And Drachi, it's taken advantage of, unless it's like Bodies on Drachi, I guess. But um, yeah, so right off the bat, I'm like, okay, my matchup actually here is really good. Mammoth Swine does so well against him. And I just need to get a little chip on that Starmie, and then Scarf Keldeo goes in. And on top of that, every time I get Thunderous, it should be able to at least get most of the kill, if not a full kill. So right off the bat, I'm like, okay, that's good. I'm going to leave Polytoad just to get Rain up, and I want to get as much damage on whatever his Drachi is. But he actually leads Starmie. Fine with me. I protect here just to see that he's indeed um, offensive. I'm like, okay, I live to Thunderbolt, assuming he's left over his right, but he turns out to be Life Orb, which, okay, that's fine. I Scald here, and thankfully I get the burn, but all I need was him to be at 61. That's in Keldeo range and range any, rain anyway. If I didn't get the burn there, I would just went um, hard to my Ferrothorn here, but instead I protect, and he goes Jirachi. Um, that's fine with me. I don't want to let him take a Thunder, though, so I go to um, Thunderous, he rocks. It's my play there by him, and I just Thunder here. So, okay, I'm like, 
Damn, he's gonna be icy wind now. Body slam, thank God. I didn't want to sub an icy wind. I figured he'd more likely to do that. Body slam. Um, so now he turns and I focus blast here, knowing that okay, focus blast from the thunder kills Jirachi anyway. But he's likely going to Mammoth's line. I get that Mammoth's line correct. I kill it with ease. So I'm like, okay, great start. He goes dragon out here. I'm like, okay, I'm not in choice band of shooting speed range, but I am in outrage range and he's quicker. So I'm fine firing this and just trading. But he reveals to be bulky dragon there, so I hit him by rise. I actually live a dragon claw after that, but I don't want to risk all my health. And I'm fine fighting with the Pi Toad. And also, yeah, if he would have hurt me. I just knew. Sometimes you just know. Anyway, this lets me get Mammoth Wind in, which is perfect. Because with the Starmie Weekend, he's actually really vulnerable. But the thing is that Jirachi, if I min rolled min, it was actually a quicker set. Or a physically defensive set, whatever. Um, if it was quicker, then I couldn't risk my um, Mammoth Wind. So I go Tentacle here. He goes Guard Chomp. I'm like, okay, I want to scout the movie locks into here. Um, so I protect here. Um... He goes for Outrage. I'm like, okay, if he gets max damage, I could die with spin. Because I'm especially defensive variant with speed. I don't have any physical defense. And thankfully he doesn't, but I don't want to risk dying and not getting the spin off. So I scald here for 40, which is great because it um, means off the Hydro or Hidden Power Rise. I can just surf with um, my Keldeo to kill it. And then he out you know, since he's Outrage Lock, which I don't get why he Outrage on this. I think Dual Chop was a play if you're predicting a switch. Um, I could get Ferro thrown in and I could set up layers of spikes slash rocks here. I go rocks first, obviously. And now I'm predicting the Starmie, and at this point I go Tentacle, just knowing, okay, firing himself is the best play for me. He hits himself with Confusion, but again, it doesn't matter unless he does it again or in the following turn. So I protect here just to match my biodge, but yeah, he's not going to hit himself here. And then on this turn, he's going to be able to kill me as I don't get the level protect. So that's fine. It's the same virtual outcome as if he didn't get hit by Confusion, because he's still Outrage Lock. And I had Revenge Kill here with Calzio locked into Surf, I believe. So yeah, it was in Surf range regardless of Rain, especially. Now he's going to go Dragonite. He's at 47, so after Roost, he actually could potentially live a, um, any attack from us. He's going to have multi-scale activated, although uh, never multi-ice. Ice School Crash is a roll in my favor, but I'm like, okay, I don't want to risk anything, so I just go Ice School Crash here. He goes Jirachi, and again, I'm like, okay, this might be faster than me. So I'm going to go Thunderous T, just knowing he's the most expendable member of my team. He goes for your turn into Starmie. I'm like, okay, this is a really crucial turn because he's burnt. He's analytic, indeed. My team is natural cure, but yeah, he's at 24, so I'm like, okay. He only lives for two turns, so I'm thinking if he spins, then Dragonite's a major threat to me. Um, but if he doubles to Magnezone predicting Ferrothorn, then I could be fucked. Or if he Hydros and I die, then I could he's in Ice Shard range. So I'm like, okay, what I need to do here is I need to do a catch all play. If he kills me with Hydro Pump, then I'm in great shape because that means Rock stay up and Mammoth's Wine plus Kelly up win the game, no questions asked. It's over. If he Hydros and kills me, then I'm in great shape because Mammoth Swine is just able to you know, take advantage of him. If he goes to Magnezone and I stay in, I'm in great shape because I beat it 1v1. So I decide that seeing as if he Hydros and misses, then he can spin on the next turn or kill me in the next turn. I'm going to sub here because that means that I for sure can get a hit and force the Dragonite to attack. And on top of that, if he if he spins on that, then I can just sub again, and he's going to die no matter what. So I'm like, okay, sub is catch all, because I want myself to die here. I want the Hydra and hit, because I don't want to notice that spin is to play. So I sub here, and unfortunately, he Hydros and misses, and then he gets to spin on the next turn. So he, he wisened up on the next turn. So in a way, that actually, that miss hurt me, but I still am strongly favored here. Um, as you see, I just take this, I sub again, just in case. Yeah, and now he goes Magnezone, which I don't get. I think his players need to go Dragonite, because... In a way, if he doesn't get greedy, then Dragonite wants to be wants me. The only thing is that I have a chance to Thunder Power it, but in a way, I wasn't going to let it go to that because I would have broken Sash and then hard to Mammoth's one because Mammoth's one always lives a Dragon Claw. In fact, it lives a plus one Dragon Claw to Rocks, more likely than not, because of no attack invested Dragonite. So yeah, I focused last year, but he goes Ma he goes Magnezone. Um, I don't really know why I did that, but he got the sun up, so now Thunder Accuracy is nuke. So that makes the Dragonite sequence a bit more problematic for me to stay in with Thunder. So I'm just going to break the sub. The sub. The, 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 the. Oh my god, I can't talk. I'm going to break the um, multi-scale with Hidden Power Rise and then switch out. But he goes Jirachi first, which I don't understand either. Because like all of a sudden, now he's just saying, okay, Ice Moves just can dominate me. Hidden Power Rise from Caldeo, sure. Ice Shard from Amazon, sure. Um, but yeah, we both miss on one turn, thankfully for me, because mine was much more likely to miss in Sun. And now um, I just Hidden Power Rise. And as you see, I just got Amazon. He subs. Um, I'm not really sure why he subbed on sleep, but now he's in full health. I ice shard just knowing, okay, two ice shards always kills him. Um, he goes Dragon Claw, and as you see, I live that. And now ice shard just takes him out. And if um, for some reason he um, didn't, I could just spam ice shard a million times until eventually he kills me or he dies. And then a Keldeo would win because he wouldn't have a chance ever to get two dragon dances up because the second ice shard always kills 
to the multis combat being up. So that's one out today. Um, I definitely got a little quote unquote luckier in this game, but I, don't, I still maintain that the hide or miss wasn't good for me. And on top of that, um, the early game luck, I don't really think the Baron mattered much. I mean, the Stami was low as is, so yeah. Um, we saw how it played out. Um, but yeah, 1 0, and I it played the good matchup, I played it well. That's fine. Game two, a bit more of a problematic matchup. Reuniclus plus Hydreigon with only Steel type. Um, Crow Thorn is just a huge problem, so I know right off the bat I need to break with Thorn and Mixed Chomp. Um, this is a team I also use in Black Wake Up against Mana. It's Surf, Mixed Guard Chomp, Sub Protect Tornadoes, Scar Flatios, Spin Tactical with Speed, and some Special Defense. Special Defense with Ferrothorn and Polytoad. Um, so I noticed it could be a bit more of an offensive game, assuming it's Trick Room and Nicholas, because Trick Room and Nicholas makes the most sense with Latios plus Hydreigon. It just seems like some special spam, basically. I know I need to weaken or kill that Tyrannic Guard after that as well. But anyway, look at my leads. I'm thinking Guard Chomp is probably the best lead. Worst case is he leads Latios, and I just go Tentacle predicting the trick. But he also might be scared of Scarf, because he doesn't play Black White at times. So I'm like, okay, he's going to fear Scarf. Maybe he'll switch out as well. But he goes Ferrothorn, which is a smart play. So he gets initiative, but then he's scared of taking the burn, I guess. So he goes Rear Nicholas. I'm like, okay, I live a non life or hidden power rise. And he reveals he's life orb, but psychic, so it does 80%, which is ridiculous. And now I just Draco to chip it. He goes Landris, and unfortunately I miss it. Would have left it dead after another round of South Rocks, but not this first round, I believe. Unless he's like no HP with minus special defense, which some do run, I guess. But um, yeah, I wasn't sure about that. Anyway, I just protect you as he goes to Draco, thinking, okay, it might be choice. He goes Focus Blast. I'm like, okay, it's probably life orb, but he's going Focus Blast and not Draco to chip the Ferrothorn. So I go Tentacle here, predicting another Focus Blast or Fire move to try and have the Pharaoh, and I get that right. And I actually always live a modest Draco here, and I'm quicker than modest, but if he's timid, then it's fine, I live with ease. So I get Toxic off, and I eat that easily with 22% left, and then I'm like, okay, this is great. I want to get some chip on something as well, so I can just scald here. I don't mind dying, and also it's a roll. But no, wait, actually, I doubled up. No, I doubled the guard chump here, so I'm like, okay, I don't think he's going to stay in and risk protection. I think he's going to go try to try to cut me off for Ferrothorn and try to set up. So I doubled the guard chump here to try and get some last stitch damage off. He goes Rear Nicholas, and now he goes Hydraken on the Earthquake, predicting me to predict Ferrothorn. Just, or just do damage with, with Earthquake. And now he goes to um, Ferrothorn and a Draco. So really good plays by him, but I'm like, okay. He didn't actually attack me. And um, he's just switching around, so he's taking rocks. And on top of that, I can still switch out and preserve myself. So I go Tornadus here, and he goes rocks. That's fine with me. I still have my tentacle alive to spin on the tar, potentially. I focus plus here, so he really is physical defense because it's 64. He power ups only does 30. I'm thinking about subbing here, potentially, but I know that I'm gonna, he's going to stay in, so I just hurricane. And now he goes tar. And like, okay, just don't miss another attack, please, team. Um, because if I focus blast this, even if he kills me on the spot, which actually doesn't even kill me, so I'd have to be like Stone Edge or something. Unfortunately, I miss, but he pursuits. And like, okay, now I'm not in pursuit range here. So I'm going to switch out predicting the crunch, predicting him to predict me to stay in. And I get that right. I go Polytoad. But he doesn't even crunch. He doubles to Landorus, which works out even better for me. Because um, now I could just Scald. And the Rio Nicholas takes damage revealing that. It has like some bulk, so it's probably a recover bank. So what I do here is I fish for the recover. I get it as a second skull does 40, by the way. Jeez. Rain boosted skull is powerful. But yeah, I get the recover here. And now he goes at Dragon. And I skull. I'm like, okay, thinking this through. He might roost here, predicting to protect. But also, I just don't want to risk any playing the games with this. So I go guard jump here. I'm like, okay, this is the most useless guard jump anyway. Useless Pokemon left on my team anyway. So yeah, I let that go. Trade here, that's fine. And now I go tentacle here, knowing okay, he's probably gonna go tar to reset to weather, so I can get a spin-off. That's great. I do indeed get the spin off. Secret tentacle. And now I toxic it. I toxic it mainly to start racking up turns because I want to get a worse sequence with Ferrothorn. I can protect here. I'm just gonna dump I'm just gonna spam protect to get as many turns as I can. Um and I know that after this sequence, if I get a double protect or I get a decent wall hurricane, it'll be in hurricane range after I get the word suit off and get the sand and life orb and whatnot. But just keep in mind, I'm gonna actually wait. Oh, why do I outslow him? He wasn't minus speed. So that life orb damage actually helped me because I didn't get a double protect because that puts him in hurricane range. So yeah, the fact that I'm slower here means that he mismade his team, but he hits focus anyway, and since I outslow him, that gets life orb damage on top of this other damage. He's on a 57 instead of 67. Now I go positive here, predicting him to switch out because he doesn't want to die. And he goes Latios. That's fine with me, because after a protect and leftovers, I'm always able to live Draco, because that's what my spread is able to do. He even rolls very high at 96. Yeah, max is like 98 and change. I toxic here, um, and now the Latios is on the timer. And more importantly, after a protect or after rocks, he switches out and this turn of poison, he could be in hurricane range. Um, I'm going to sub here predicting a switch, though, just because prankster anyway. He goes to Tranitar. I'm like, okay, just hit one at least, please. Semi-Latios could clean him, potentially. 
Um, I know it's kind of dicey here, though. I'm going to have to hit moves to win the game, but to be fair, I missed multiple moves before. He goes Landers here, focus hits, but it doesn't matter. He's in Hurricane range anyway. He's using Power Ice just to force himself to break the sub. And Hurricane is thankfully going to land straight. So just evening out the luck from before, and not to mention the prior series. Thankfully, he goes Renix. I'm like, okay, this is favorable for me, given the skull damage. And I do take it out, and it's like, great. And I don't know I went to it instead of Tatar, honestly. Tatar had to be Choppel, right? Is it not Choppel Tar? I focus blast, and he is Choppel. And I just don't understand why he didn't keep it any other time. But finally, he kills it with Pursuit. And now I'm able to kill this with Surf. And now go to my um, Ferrothrin this weekend, die to a Draco. And then so long as I hit a Draco of my own, I win the game. So I go Ferrothrin here. And now I miss Draco, and he misses Draco. The craziest turn of all time. My heart was beating on my chest at this point. But thankfully, I'm finally able to connect here and emerge victorious, winning the grand finale of the, the seasonal of Black and White, which this, coupled with the fact that I won Pokemon Perfect Tour, I came in semifinals of Black and White Cup and won six games in SPL, caps off a really strong first half of the year in Black and White. Unfortunately, the second half of the circuit is really limited in terms of Black and White options. That is not into my tour anymore, especially, or in World Cup anymore. So probably going to be about it for, like, super serious Black and White games, barring Smog on Classic Playoffs, which, spoiler alert, I'm going to make you know, at least a tiebreak at this point. Things are looking great. So at least one more black and white game of a very serious nature for me. But also there's black and white global championship going on right now. There's black and white tournament Pokemon Perfect I'm doing right now. And I'm in ruins of Alpha Premier League finals playing black and white in at least one game. If not tiebreak as well if we tie the series. So definitely going to be some smaller scale and also classic black and white games to come. Keep your eyes open for that. Lots of exciting stuff to come. All right, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this. Lots of high-level black-white content against a strong player and opponent that maybe isn't the best black-white player, but he definitely knows how to play a game. I just saw from this series, and I was really excited to play him again. So good games, 850. Congratulations on making the finals, and really happy to win this tournament, guys. All right, peace. You use stuff to come.